good news is that we have extraordinary list of the speakers. Bad news because the list is so, the list is not short. 17 of our colleagues would like to speak about this topic, about Syria. And I would like to suggest you to be, to try to be in three, four minutes. We are parliamentarians, you know what does it mean. Syria, like, like, it's not first time on our agenda. We held the debate during the winter meeting at the beginning of this year. We adopted a resolution on the human crisis in Syria, in Istanbul, and yet today's discussion has never been so timely. Our Istanbul resolution urged to end the brute force against civilians and systematic violation of international law, and we affirmed the international community's commitment to a Syria-led political transition for democratic system based on constitutional equality where all citizens of Syria will enjoy the fundamental rights and freedom regards of their ethnic, religi religious, and sectorial background. Today we have the pleasure that uh, the industrial note, keynote, will deliver our Minister of Foreign Affairs. He was Prime Minister in previous mandate, he was Prime Minister now 39 government. Thanks to President Migliori, he, President, he is still with us, and uh, President Migliori will be one of the speaker. And uh, I will now pass the floor to the Mr. Igor Lukšić, Minister of Foreign Affairs and European Integrations of Montenegro. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members of the Parliamentary Assembly, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly an honor for me to address you and wish you a warm welcome to Montenegro. Due to its geographical position, historical and cultural heritage, as well as the openness of its culture, Montenegro has a natural interest to actively participate in the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean is the cradle and crossroads of various civilizations and cultures, characterized in all times by frequent and diverse communication and exchange between cultures sharing this space. Europe was born in the Mediterranean. Its roles stem from Greece, Rome, Jerusalem, Constantinople, Greek philosophy, Roman law, Christianity, but also Phoenician trade efforts are intertwined and represent deepest fundaments of Europe. In the meantime, complexity of the Mediterranean as the crossroads of civilizations, uh, cultures, and religions stresses importance of cooperation. There can never be enough of it, as the ongoing profound transformation and transition in the southern part of the macro region show. Aware of the need to invest additional efforts in order to achieve tolerance, respect and understanding for difference in cultures, identities and standards that exist in the Mediterranean, we are pleased to be the host of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly Mediterranean Forum. The OSCE Parliamentary, Parliamentary Assembly Mediterranean Forum has proved to be a credible forum for better mutual understanding, exchange of opinions and ideas, and deliberating solutions for current challenges faced by the Mediterranean countries. Situation on the southern banks of the Mediterranean and in the Middle East has a strong impact on the security of the Mediterranean and future as well. A sad side of the process reflected in instance in the tragic loss of lives of desperate immigrants has to stop. Countries of the Mediterranean are undergoing the process of historical transformation that requires support of the international partners. In order to have a successful democratic transition, it is necessary to introduce concrete measures and projects that will strengthen the democratic institutions, ensure freedom of speech and expression, empower civil society and encourage economic growth with the aim of reducing poverty and social differences. Integrated OSCE approach to security, based on which the issues of democratic reforms are not separated from the issues of military security and economic development and cooperation proves to be irreplaceable. The OEC represents one of the platforms for joint action and approximation of northern and southern banks of the Mediterranean in seeking answers to the contemporary challenges of this region. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very pleased that we gather here to exchange views on the situation in the Mediterranean 
and also discuss case of Syria that still requires the closest attention of the global political uh, public. Driven by the examples from the recent history of Balkans, we have learned the immediate uh, stop of violence by all sides in the affected countries and an ad adequate response of the international community without distinction of any kind is necessary. That is why Montenegro urges for that in Syria, though aware that this cannot be resolved in one stroke. And it is about a lasting process. We are all witnessing dynamics of international relations, interconnectivity and interdependence of so-called big and small. All that reinforced by the great ch economic challenges do not provide us with many alternatives. Montenegro is fully aware that contribution of each state is extremely important, as well as that partnership and cooperation imposed as a necessity in our day's society. Guided by these principles, Montenegro, as a member of the United Nations Human Rights Council, participates and adequately reacts in human rights violations worldwide. Also, we firmly continue to make progress on our path to the EU and NATO, which principles and values are complementary. After two and a half years of stall, Montenegro welcomes unanimous adoption of the Security Council Resolution 2118 and the relevant decision of the OPCW Executive Council on destruction of chemical weapons in Syria. We also welcome the recently adopted Security Council's presidential statement on hu humanitarian situation. These essential moves represent a sign of approximation between the international community and the key actors that are to contribute to peaceful and comprehensive solution to the crisis in Syria. Sound basis has been created. However, that does not mean the end of the conflict, which has grown very brutal, derailing the peace effort. Further attention and efforts need to be focused on stricter and more consistent implementation of the adopted measures, especially with regard to the need to organize as soon as possible a peace conference as the best way to end conflict and establish peace and create conditions for inclusive political process and democratic transition. Constructive approach of all the involved actors in reaching a compromise as a basic prerequisite of diplomatic solution gives hope that obstacles will be bridged and that the conference will be held soon, thus initiating the peace process. On August the 21st, the international community witnessed an, accept, an unacceptable and rather tragic manner of use of chemical weapons in Syria. I hereby repeat that Montenegro strongly condemns the use of chemical weapons confirmed by the UN inspection team report. We hereby call for the responsibility for this one and for all other crimes resulting in mass violation of international law in Syria. Chemical weapons do not belong to the century we live in. To that end, we welcome the decision of Syria to accede to the Chemical Weapons Con Convention. But at the same time, we underline the obligations raising from the membership as well as the Security Council's resolution. We join the international, communities, uh, international community in expressing our expectations that Syria will demonstrate this form of commitment to their timely and comprehensive implementation in order to avoid forceful reaction of the Security Council as defined in Resolution 2118 uh, 21 in case of non-compliance. In this context, early data about the level of cooperation of the Syrian regime is encouraging, and we hope that it will continue in the same spirit until full destruction of the overall chemical arsenal is achieved. Humanitarian situation in Syria and over seven million of Syrians with the urgent need for humanitarian assistance requires special attention. Montenegro welcomes the Security Council's presidential statement and finds it necessary to ensure its implementation, thus ensuring free access to humanitarian aid and protection of humanitarian and medical staff uh, for the purpose of rehabilitation of the re humanitarian situation and providing assistance to the affected population. Humanitarian crisis, with its consequences, seriously threatened peace and security in the region. Solidarity and burden sharing with countries of the asylum mostly of Southern Mediterranean, are the main guidelines for resolving Syrian refugee crisis. Earlier developments on the north of Africa and current crisis in Syria caused immigration flows from the Southern Mediterranean and Syria. Montenegro is also among countries faced with this challenge. Through harmonization of national legislation with the EU, we continue to implement international standards in the asylum and migration sphere. Montenegro is fully aware of responsibility and sensitivity of transitional area as a country that since recently has a land border with the EU. Mainly guided by principles of international protection and additionally driven by responsible membership uh, in the Human Rights Council, 
We support all activities under the auspices of the United Nations and other international partners with the aim of finalizing conflict and achieving peace. The Syrian case, among others, reminds us of the importance of preventive action and mediation in preservation of international peace and security, building the capacities of the international community for preventive action and early warning regarding security threats uh, before they become a source of conflict represent the key for facing similar situations in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Parliamentary Assembly, a common goal is to create an inclusive, prosperous and sustainable Mediterranean, promoting innovation and creativity and fully accepting the principles of the rule of law, democracy and observance of the highest standards in the protection of human rights throughout the Mediterranean. In this context, the OSC role is an imperative. After the fall of the Berlin Wall, it had taken up to 20 years, and in case of the former Yugoslavia, even a terrible bloodshed for some of the ex-communist countries to set the right course. The Mediterranean countries must not be left to their own devices. The cultural wealth and the resources of our macro region should be used to the long-term benefit of each and every person. Mr. President, Montenegro is recognized due to its continuous active participation within the OSCE and considering results achieved on the European and Euro-Atlantic path as a credible partner in, of international community in strengthening the overall stability and security in the Mediterranean. Montenegro is determined to affirm itself through constructive bilateral and multilateral cooperation as a country that contributes to peace, stability and prosperity of the region, Europe and the world. Finally, allow me to wish your success, uh, I wish your success in your work, convinced that each after each one of these kinds of meetings, we are closer to the achievement of our common goals. Thank you for your attention. Now we are starting with our list with just 18 names. First one is, it's our privileged former president of Parliamentary Assembly, President Ricardo Migliore. Ricardo, please, the floor is yours. Honorable President, gentili colleghi, Prendo la parola a nome dell'Assemblea parlamentare del Mediterraneo. L'APM considera estremamente importante la collaborazione con l'OSCE e la sua Assemblea parlamentare, con cui si è sviluppata una sinergia nel corso degli anni e recentemente ha contribuito alla riunione OSCE di Malta dedicata al codice di condotta nell'aspetto militare della sicurezza. In merito alla questione siriana, l'APM, su richiesta del Segretario Generale delle Nazioni Unite, ha condotto una missione delicata in Siria e Libano lo scorso luglio. A Damasco la delegazione APM ha intrattenuto incontri bilaterali con membri del Parlamento e del Governo siriano, con esponenti diplomatici e rappresentanti delle Nazioni Unite, da Beirut con parlamentari libanesi. La missione aveva come obiettivo primario quello di contribuire alla risoluzione degli ostacoli incontrati dalle Nazioni Unite nelle operazioni all'interno del Paese, specie quelle relative alla consegna degli aiuti umanitari, e di utilizzare la diplomazia parlamentare quale strumento di confidence building nel quadro del conflitto interno in Siria. La delegazione ha anche consegnato al Parlamento siriano la comunicazione congiunta dell'Unione Europea del 24 giugno sulla crisi siriana. Tra i risultati della missione è da segnalare l'impegno preso da parte delle autorità siriane a livello parlamentare e governativo di assicurare un collegamento diretto con le agenzie umanitarie dell'ONU per garantire una maggior interazione tra le parti coinvolte. L'ONU ha anche chiesto l'assistenza dell'APM per evitare le azioni militari, in particolare attraverso la cessazione delle forniture di armamenti a tutte le parti del conflitto. L'aspetto umanitario era ovviamente la priorità. Sequestri e rapimenti si sono moltiplicati, così come lo sciacallaggio e l'espulsione coatta di gran parte della popolazione dalle proprie case, che unitamente al conflitto interno ha determinato decine di migliaia di profughi. La delegazione ha notato inoltre la quasi totale mancanza di comunicazione tra il Parlamento siriano e la comunità internazionale. Per questo motivo, a seguito di un'altra richiesta pervenuta alle Nazioni Unite, l'Assemblea parlamentare del Mediterraneo si è impegnata a organizzare una riunione parlamentare di alto livello sulla questione siriana. La riunione si svolgerà ad Amman, 
ospitata dal Parlamento del Regno di Giordania il prossimo 10 novembre e tutti i Parlamenti membri, compreso quello siriano, sono stati invitati a contribuire alla conferenza assieme ai rappresentanti delle istituzioni internazionali interessate. Articolata su tre assi, la conferenza di Amman analizzerà la situazione in Siria focalizzando sull'emergenza umanitaria in Siria e nei paesi vicini, Giordania, Iraq, Libano e Turchia. Dopo verranno analizzate la proposta russa e le migliori strategie per contribuire a livello parlamentare alla riuscita della conferenza Ginevra 2. Il programma è in fase di finalizzazione in collaborazione con Mr. Brahimi Madame Amos e con il ministro Lavrov. La PM esporrà in seguito i risultati emersi ad Amman, al segretario generale delle Nazioni Unite, al Consiglio di Sicurezza, al Congresso americano, alla Duma russa attraverso missioni specifiche. Desidero concludere approfittando di questa occasione per invitare l'Assemblea parlamentare dell'OSCE a nome del presidente della PM, senatore Francesco Amoruso, invitando e offrendo un invito ufficiale a partecipare per contribuire alla conferenza di Amman come passo fondamentale per favorire il processo politico in Siria. Sono sicuro che il Presidente Crivo Capici in quell'occasione rappresenterà bene le preoccupazioni che stanno emergendo dai nostri lavori. Grazie per l'attenzione. Grazie Riccardo. Our next speaker is the reporter for the first committee, Madame Pia Kauma. Pia, please. Chairman, dear colleagues, the international community is facing a serious failure in Syria. It has been, first of all, unable to support maintaining peace at the beginning of the crisis, but also in making peace after, even after two years of negotiations between all actors. The road to a peace is long, but I stress that the longer the process of reconciliation is delayed, then more difficult is it to solve the crisis. It is of crucial importance that the leading nations such as the U.S. and the Russian Federation, reach an understanding on how to solve the crisis. The chemical weapon strikes are monstrous. No such crime should go unprosecuted. We must also bear in mind that the longer it takes to get the perpetrators to justice, the more unlikely it gets. The victims of the strikes, countless children and other innocent civilians, deserve justice. I quote the Finnish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Erki Tuomioja, saying that the use of chemical weapons is a war crime for which those responsible must be brought to justice through referral to the International Criminal Court. Finland welcomes the agreement reached on a strongly worded Security Council resolution to collect and destroy chemical weapons in Syria under international control. There can be no impunity for the perpetrators of war crimes and other atrocities. The Nobel Peace Prize for the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons is a welcome recognition to the struggle against these horrible weapons, which should never be used. I congratulate the OPCW on the prize. Finally, Finland has offered its full support for a solution in the crisis, as communicated by the Finnish Minister of Foreign Affairs Erki Tuomioja at the UN General Assembly, Finland stands ready to contribute to a possible UN peacekeeping operation to be established in Syria. In my opinion, every single member of the international community, including this OSCE member states, should consider ways of helping in solving the crisis. For example, Finland is considering ways of assisting with the disarming of the large stock of chemical weapons due to our specific expertise on the chemical weapons prevention. All nations should also make preliminary plans to address the devastation to the physical infrastructure resulting from the war when a sol solution is found. Peace can only come from the Syrians themselves, but I want to believe that the international community will have the courage and the integrity to help solving the crisis when the possibility arises. Thank you very much. Yeah. C'est aussi un foyer de profonde instabilité qui intéresse directement l'OSCE. Notre organisation doit donc définir des réponses adéquates et claires. Lors du débat que nous avions eu à Vienne en février, j'avais souligné les risques d'une déstabilisation plus grave encore. J'exprimais mes craintes sur une éventuelle utilisation d'armes chimiques. 
Hélas, ces craintes se sont révélées fondées. Le démantèlement du programme chimique syrien est une priorité. Nous devons saluer les dispositions adoptées le 27 septembre. La décision de l'Organisation pour l'interdiction des armes chimiques et la résolution 2118 du Conseil de sécurité prévoit ce démantèlement en plusieurs étapes selon un calendrier précis. Ce n'est et ce ne doit être que le début d'un processus. Il doit être mené avec fermeté et détermination. Nous avons aussi un mécanisme solide et crédible. Les obligations sont établies de façon claire. Elles devront être respectées. Il me paraît essentiel que le dispositif intègre la menace de mesures coercitives en cas de manquement. La communauté internationale ne peut supporter l'usage de telles armes car il a été rappelé fort justement que c'est un véritable crime de guerre et un crime contre l'humanité. Elle doit affirmer sa ferme résolution à faire respecter la loi internationale et l'attribution du prix Nobel de la paix à l'Organisation pour l'interdiction des armes chimiques ne peut que nous encourager à persévérer dans cette voie. Au-delà, c'est bien sûr la résolution politique de ce dramatique conflit qui nous met en demeure de prendre des décisions claires. Ce qui est en cause, c'est la situation en Syrie même, mais c'est aussi le risque d'un embrasement de la région. Il faut donc relancer rapidement le processus politique. Dans notre déclaration d'Istanbul, nous avons affirmé l'engagement pris par la communauté internationale d'assurer une transition politique conduite par la Syrie vers un système démocratique fondé sur l'égalité constitutionnelle. Nous avons souligné que dans ce cadre, tous les citoyens devront jouir des droits et libertés de caractère fondamental, quels que soient leurs antécédents ethniques, religieux ou sectaires. La résolution 2118 va dans le sens de l'appel que nous avions lancé au Conseil de sécurité de prendre toutes ses responsabilités. Elle endosse les principes agréés à Genève le 30 juin 2012. Des discussions sont en cours. Les Nations Unies se donnent pour objectif la mi-novembre pour la tenue d'une conférence. Tout cela va dans le bon sens, mais restons vigilants. Pour ma part, je crois nécessaire, dans cette perspective, d'appuyer la coalition nationale syrienne. La France a pris des initiatives à cette fin. Enfin, cette crise a une dimension, une dimension humanitaire qui ne cesse de s'aggraver. Des pays comme le Liban et la Jordanie doivent supporter une charge de plus en plus lourde. Leur propre équilibre interne, déjà fragile, risque d'être affecté. Dans la déclaration d'Istanbul, nous avons appelé la communauté internationale à fournir une aide financière d'urgence aux pays accueillant des réfugiés, comme le réclamait notamment la délégation canadienne de notre organisation de l'OSCE. Nous avons invité aussi les États membres à accroître leur assistance humanitaire. La déclaration présidentielle du Conseil de sécurité, adoptée le 2 octobre, constitue un motif d'espoir. Elle répond aux attentes des acteurs humanitaires. Elle demande aux autorités syriennes de faciliter les opérations humanitaires de secours. Elle engage toutes les parties du conflit à faciliter la livraison de l'aide humanitaire. Nous devons rester attentifs aux réponses qui seront données sur le terrain à ces demandes très concrètes. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Now the floor has uh, Vice President, the other Vice President, uh, Isabel Pozuela. Isabel, please. Arrollado siempre en la Asamblea Parlamentaria dentro de este foro, de este foro mediterráneo. Eh, España es un país que está al sur de Europa, como ustedes bien saben, igual que Italia, que Grecia, y vivimos de una manera muy especial, siempre lo hemos vivido, los problemas que se generan a la otra orilla. Yo vivo además en el sur del sur, en Andalucía, en Sevilla y en Cádiz. Desde Cádiz, desde las costas de Cádiz, se ven las costas del norte de Marruecos. Vemos las casas, las iluminaciones, los faros. Estamos a un paso y, por lo tanto, somos muy sensibles a todo lo que significan los conflictos, los problemas que se están generando en toda la zona del Mediterráneo. Tenemos ahora mismo tres grandes ejes de conflicto dentro del Mediterráneo. Por una parte, Siria que parece que definitivamente se abre una esperanza a través de los acuerdos de nuevas negociaciones, Ginebra II, y de la resolución aprobada por unanimidad por parte de Naciones Unidas, es una vía de diálogo, una vía que eh, eh, acepta la proposición, la resolución 
que aprobó la Asamblea Parlamentaria de la OCE en julio, en la que pedía una salida política y una salida diplomática al conflicto, pero también tenemos los conflictos abiertos a través, a raíz de los movimientos de la llamada Primavera Árabe en 2011, que han desembocado en situaciones de inestabilidad y que provocan nuevos refugiados, nuevos movimientos, alentados además por el aprovechamiento de nuevo, los nuevos movimientos terroristas de Al Qaeda, que aprovechando los estados fallidos en la zona del Sahel, están extendiéndose en toda África y provocando una situación de inestabilidad e incertidumbre. Creo, colega, creo, amigo, que la Asamblea Parlamentaria de la OCE y la propia Organización para la Seguridad y Co Cooperación en Europa debe hacer honor a su sigla y tomar esta situación que, por un lado, produce conflictos humanitarios que nos sonrojan a todos, nos avergüenzan a todos, porque no somos capaces de abordarlos y de darle una solución, como los refugiados o las movilizaciones de población desplazados, más de cuatro millones en Siria, o los náufragos que se producen en el Mediterráneo y que vienen de, Euro de, de África a Europa, dar solución a, esto, a esta situación, pero además dar y abordar soluciones políticas que abunden en la resolución definitiva de estos problemas. Pero no podemos quedarnos solamente en los sentimientos humanitarios que nos producen estas dramáticas situaciones. Sería vergonzoso, como bien decía el presidente de la Asamblea Parlamentaria del Consejo de Europa, que una vez más y día tras día, mes tras mes, mes, tras mes nosotros nos sonrojemos de lo que está pasando y, digamos, y podamos decir no sabíamos lo que estaba pasando, no sabíamos lo que estaba ocurriendo. Lo sabemos y debemos de actuar. Debemos de abandonar definitivamente la retórica y la Organización para la Seguridad y Cooperación en Europa debe tomar el Mediterráneo con todos sus ejes de conflicto y toda su repercusión social, política y económica como un eje prioritario de trabajo ya de manera inmediata. Muchas gracias, Presidente. One, and it lays in what we could say, condemning as strong as possible, but that condemnation also being followed by the initiative of the making of the inventory of the weapons and to proceed in a process um, which is a process of neutralizing them. However, I would um, like to underscore that this is a very complex thing and would like to underscore the complex nature of such an approach. Um, when called upon, Belgium um, is um, ready to, to provide the knowledge and specialized help um, with, our, with our knowledge. And uh, we know that uh, we have a part of our history in which chemical weapons played a giant role. It was almost a, uh, a century ago that the so-called Ypres was used the first time on the battlefields of the First World War. The action that we are now going to undertake is very challenging. And um, it's only, it's, I think it's the only one that we can do right now. But I would also like to express my solidarity with those who underscored and stressed that solidarity must be on the forefront of this international action. And that it cannot always be the same ones who are called upon to take up their responsibility in an action like the one that we are going to undertake in Syria, albeit on the field of the refugees, but also albeit on neutralizing the weapons. So I would really call upon um, not only the members of the Mediterranean uh, area, but also on others to take up uh, their responsibility. And I would really squeeze the opportunity to do this here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, in the same time, Minister of Defense. It was our privilege to hear you in the short remark, but very important for us. Mr. Gigemenian, as I mentioned now, you are the next. Please, the floor is yours. Уважаемые коллеги, год назад в Тиране, в Албании, парламентская ассамблея ОБСЕ приняла заявление по сирийскому вопросу с одним против. Против принятия этой резолюции голосовала Армения, потому что не получила исчерпывающего ответа на вопрос. Принятие этой резолюции обеспечит 
постепенный переход на политические рельсы урегулирования сирийского вопроса. Мы ответа так и не получили, а прошедший год показал, что он еще более э, усугубил положение в Сирии. Сотни тысяч людей погибли и стали беженцами. Армения не понаслышке знает о подлинной ситуации в Сирии, потому что свыше 10 тысяч сирийских беженцев армян получили свой приют в Армении. Уже у нас функционируют смешанные на арабо и арабском и армянском языках школы, где получают, продолжают свое образование сирийские дети армянского происхождения. Здесь коллега из Турции сказал, что сотни тысяч в Сирии погибли не от химического оружия. Было бы честнее, если бы он продолжил, а сколько погибло от оружия, которое поставлялось боевикам, в том числе и членам Аль-Каиды, со стороны Турции. Вот тогда была бы более полная и объективная картина. Здесь с удовлетворением отмечалось, что Организация по запрету химического оружия была удостоена Нобелевской премии мира. Но если быть до конца объективными и честными, Нобелевскую премию мира по достоинству заслуживал президент Российской Федерации Владимир Путин, который сам явился инициатором и последовательным проводником того, за что... Э, Комитет получил Нобелевскую премию. Здесь надо отметить и проявление доброй воли со стороны президента Соединенных Штатов Америки. Думается, что будет честнее, если все те из наших парламентариев, которые в течение одного года критиковали российское руководство за некоструктивизм, спустя год уже убедились о единственно правильном подходе со стороны России. Армянское руководство в лице президента Армении Сержа Сарксяна изначально поддерживало политическое решение сирийского вопроса. И надо сказать, что вчера уже генеральный секретарь НАТО Андрес Фог Расмусен сказал, что нет альтернативы политическому решению сирийского вопроса. Здесь другой коллега из турецкой делегации сокрушался на бездействие церквей в республике Кипр. Хочу просто напомнить, что по данным на 1913 год на территории Западной Армении, то есть современной Турции, функционировало 2200 армянских церквей. Сейчас они в основном разрушены или функционируют как мечети. Чтобы мое утверждение не было голословным, приведу один свежащий пример. В 2013 году, повторяю, в этом году была снесена церковь святого Иоанна, и на ее месте будет построено общежитие для женщин. А церковь 12 апостолов в Карсе после 1915 года, как и десятки и сотни церквей, функционируют как мечети. Все сказанное преследует одну единственную цель. Надо, чтобы парламентская ассамблея ОБСЕ все хорошее, что связано с той или иной страной, с лидером той или иной страны, было бы отмечено. А наши упущения и желание господина Воридиса говорить на одном языке – ставит перед нами задачу далее не руководствоваться двойными стандартами. Спасибо большое. Thank you very much, Mr. Gamian. Now, Mr. Maltai is from Canada. Uh, to, to prepare, Mr. Ferner from the Malt, Malt, please, Canada. Il nous fait. Je veux revenir sur la rencontre d'Istanbul, où, semble-t-il, nous étions venus d'accord, l'ensemble des pays de l'OSCE, pour prêter une assistance immédiate, sans tenir compte, sans tenir compte de la race, du sexe et des personnes expatriées de leur pays, soit la Syrie. Depuis ce temps, il s'est écoulé plus de 90 jours. 5 000 personnes, à chaque jour, sont déplacées, soit à l'intérieur ou à l'extérieur de la Syrie. Ce qui veut dire que depuis Istanbul, près d'un demi-million de personnes se sont ajoutées aux millions de personnes réfugiées. Rappelons-nous dans quelles circonstances nous en avions discuté à Istanbul. Nous avions dit à l'époque 
qu'il était injuste de laisser porter aux pays limitrophes, en particulier la Turquie, la responsabilité de l'accueil de ces réfugiés. J'avais demandé à l'ensemble des délégués, Monsieur le Président, de faire pression dans leurs pays respectifs pour que l'aide humanitaire soit accélérée dans les pays limitrophes pour aider ces pays, finalement, à accueillir ces réfugiés. Vous savez, les Syriens ont déjà tellement souffert des armes conventionnelles qu'ils ne peuvent souffrir plus avec des armes chimiques. Nous laissons donc à la diplomatie, soit à la Conférence de Genève, aux Nations unies, le soin de faire de cette conférence un élément de paix durable. Nous ne sommes pas interpellés uniquement aujourd'hui comme parlementaires, mais bien comme êtres humains. Combien de litres de sang syrien doit-il couler encore avant que l'humanité prenne sa responsabilité? Je réitère et je redemande à l'ensemble des parlementaires ici de faire pression sur le gouvernement pour apporter une solution alimentaire de sécurité, de soins immédiats aux pays limitrophes qui accueillent. Le Canada a déjà engagé un demi-milliard de dollars, mais le Canada seul et les, les États-Unis et les pays qui participent présentement doivent recevoir de l'aide de plus de ce qui se fait présentement. Nous avons un devoir d'être humain. Vous savez, un père de famille, s'il n'a qu'une tranche de pain, la partage avec tous ses enfants. Le morceau soit-il petit, mais tout le monde en a. Nous avons un devoir humanitaire. Laissons les discussions politiques de côté. Agissons maintenant, sinon l'histoire retiendra de nous que nous parlementions pendant que des gens crevaient de faim. Merci beaucoup, M. le Président. Thank you very much. Mr. Maltese. After Mr. Maltese from Canada, now we have Maltese from Malta. Please. Thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to take the floor. I would like to link the discussion we are having now with the discussion that we had this morning. The concept of the union or alliance of civilizations across the Mediterranean is one of solidarity, mutual understanding, and problem sharing. Despite the progress and the large strides in this direction that we have taken together over the years, these last days and weeks, we have witnessed how far we still need to go. We all have fresh memories of the appalling human tragedy with the loss of so much human life off the coast of Lampedusa last week. On that occasion, at least 315 immigrants drowned within sight of shore. Yesterday, Mr. President, yesterday, as I was leaving Malta to attend this meeting in Budva, a Maltese patrol boat was bringing ashore 140 immigrants whose boat had capsized just hours earlier. The Italian military managed to rescue another 58 migrants from the same boat, but about 50 more are still missing, presumed dead. Many of these were Syrians escaping the conflict in their country. These tragedies are happening on a weekly basis across the Mediterranean. Every year, tens of thousands of illegal immigrants are crossing the Mediterranean from Africa, seeking a safer and better life in Europe. Most of these immigrants reach Italy and Malta. Many others drown. Together with these, we are now seeing thousands of migrants crossing from the North African coast after escaping Syria. We need to wake up to the situation. The international community needs to wake up to the situation. The OSCE, Parliamentary Assembly, needs to wake up to this situation. We cannot continue to ignore this vast and tragic human suffering. We need to take action. The problem of illegal immigration needs to be brought to the top of our political agenda. People are dying. Hundreds and thousands of immigrants are drowning on the borders of Europe. This is a security issue. The OSCE must wake up and take action. Burden sharing, development aid, 
and conflict resolution are the keystones to addressing the problem of illegal immigration. The European Mediterranean countries, especially Malta, Italy, and Greece, who are receiving the majority of these immigrants, need tangible help. Burden and responsibility sharing will allow us to offer more humane and adequate treatment to the large number of migrants. In the longer term, development aid, fairer trade, and conflict resolution to the originator countries are the only solutions to curb and end these tragedies. Mr. President, every week, if not every day, desperate people are drowning in the Mediterranean. As we have heard repeatedly in a number of interventions today, we cannot afford to look the other way. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, and to your country for extraordinary efforts to help all of us and the international community. I know how is managing with that in the small country. Mr. Liepins from Latvia, and after that, Mr. Hadjianis from Cyprus. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear colleagues, um, this is another small country speaking. Uh, Latvia is far removed from, um, from the conflict geographically, but Latvia fully realizes the potential global implications of this war. And it follows, therefore, that the resolution of the war lies largely in the hands of the international community. But Latvia, though small, will play its part in finding the solution. Latvia strongly condemns the use of chemical weapons, not just in Syria, but worldwide. But concentrating on the issue of chemical weapons, which though crucial is the first step to resolving the war, we might then run the risk of pushing aside the war waged by uh, conventional weapons. And I think we have to bear in mind this as we go through the steps of destroying the chemical weapons in Syria. Because the success of this initiative, this is the, the removal of the chemical weapons, depends on the termination also of the use of conventional weapons, ultimately, uh, which, which will be the ultimate solution uh, to uh, stopping the conflict and ensuring that there is peace throughout the region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you. Mr. No Liepins, I am a friend of Mr. Kajianis, and uh, next will be Mr. Demilly from France, please. Thank you, Mr. President, and also thank you for your hospitality here in uh, your country. Allow me very briefly three points as I am obliged to comment on what my Turkish uh, colleague has stated. We are the first to wish for a settlement of the Cyprus problem but not just any settlement, and not any Turkish settlement. The reason why the problem has not been settled today has been the non-observance by Turkey and occupation power of international law of pending UN Security Council resolutions. The restoration and maintenance of Muslim shrines in the governmental control areas constitute an important aspect of Cyprus efforts to preserve its culture and religious diversity. This has always been reflected in the state budget and despite the current dire economic situation. The religious and the other fundamental rights of enclaved Greek Cypriots in occupied area are closely violated. In more than one cases, their worship has been brutally interrupted by the illegal occupation regime. We invite all participants to visit our country, if they have done so, and to witness with their own eyes what the real situation is. Due to Cyprus' location and its own bitter experience of military aggression, refugees, and displaced persons, the Republic of Cyprus has been following closely the tragedy unfolding in Syria for 30 months now. Cyprus, deep concern at the escalation of tension and the possibility of a military aggression against Syria following the attack in Damascus on 21st August was also reflected in a resolution adopted by the House of Representatives on 5th September 2013. For its part, 
Cyprus stands ready, as always in the past, including during the crisis in Lebanon in 2006, seven years ago, to assist evacuation of EU and third country nationals from the conflict areas. To this end, a contingency plan has been set up in order to ensure Cyprus authorities coordinated and effective response in cases of political crisis, military conflict, or natural disaster. In terms of humanitarian assistance, Cyprus has contributed as, bad as, as best as it could at the level of the state, the church and the private sector, both financially and also in kind, for Syria refugees in Jordan and Lebanon, and we continue to do so within its, so within its capability, capabilities. Cyprus strongly welcomes the latest positive developments which led to the race and launching of the process to dismantle the Destroy Syria's Chemical Weapons Program as per UN Security Council Resolution 2118 and the pertinent decision of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. A very recent development has been the selection of Cyprus as support base for a joint OPCW UN committee upon the UN Secretary General's proposal to the Security Council that will be composed for up to 100 experts and will be deployed for the purpose of destroying Syria's chemical arsenal. Cyprus joins the international community in its appeal towards the full implementation of resolu Resolution 2118, which stresses that an inclusive Syria-led political process based on the Geneva communique, communique of 30 June 2000, 2012 is the only solu solution to the Syria crisis. Every, finally, every day that, pa that passed by adds to the toll of over 100,000 victims, 4 million displaced, and another 2 million refugees fleeing in neighboring countries before further de deterioration of the humanitarian situation and the spillover of the crisis be out of any proportion and convening of International Conference on Syria, exhibiting the necessary political will towards of political sentiment that we respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Syria and the will of the Syrian people by avoiding acts that further escalating tension is how we can best serve peace and stability in the region and also in the world. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. I just to remind all of, all of us, the debate is about Syria. Mr. Nemili, please help us. Yes. Uh, and the next one, just to announce who is the next one. Next one is a special representative for gender issues, Madame Hedi Fry. Please, Demilly. Merci, mes chers collègues. Monsieur le Président, je voudrais d'abord saluer votre choix de mettre à l'ordre du jour la question syrienne dans notre instance, car notre Assemblée doit être le lieu où peuvent être et doivent être échangés des points de vue parfois contradictoires, comme on l'a entendu tout à l'heure. Même si les terribles drames de Lampedusa ont momentanément effacé de nos écrans radars médiatiques la situation syrienne, on le sait bien, cette dernière n'en demeure pas moins criante. La guerre civile, la guerre civile pardon, en Syrie est l'une des plus grandes catastrophes humanitaires depuis des décennies, puisque l'on ressent, cela a été dit, désormais près de 150 000 morts et des millions de personnes déplacées et réfugiées. Le massacre chimique du 21 août dernier a représenté une ligne rouge qui, une fois franchie, ne pouvait pas laisser la communauté internationale indifférente. Pour le dire autrement, mes chers collègues, une ligne rouge qui, si j'étais cynique, a au moins eu un mérite, celui de faire bouger enfin la communauté internationale, qui jusqu'alors et depuis des années ne se contentait que de condamnations stériles et hypocrites pour satisfaire probablement sa bonne conscience. Ce massacre du 21 août, que le secrétaire général des Nations, humaines, des Nations Unies pardon, a lui-même qualifié de « crime contre l'humanité », ne peut rester bien sûr impuni. Agir est un impératif car notre absence de réaction encouragerait M. Bachar el-Assad à recommencer et probablement à amplifier ses exactions. 
Nous ne pouvons donc que nous réjouir que le Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies ait enfin adopté le projet de résolution sur le démantèlement de l'arsenal chimique syrien en imposant des obligations et en prévoyant bien sûr des mesures coercitives en cas de non-respect. Je salue le courage des membres de l'OIAC, Organisation pour l'interdiction des armes chimiques, participant à cette mission dangereuse. OIAC qui vient de recevoir le prix Nobel de la paix et que l'Assemblée parlementaire de l'OSCE, dans son ensemble, se doit de féliciter. Je salue aussi plusieurs pays de l'espace OSCE qui se sont montrés particulièrement actifs sur ce dossier, notamment les États-Unis, la Russie et la France. Il est de notre devoir de prendre nos responsabilités, tout en sachant que cette responsabilité est lourde à porter et qu'elle demande réflexion. L'exemple du vote de la Chambre des communes montre à quel point il est parfois difficile de s'engager. Si le plan visant à détruire les armes chimiques est sans conteste une avancée, il ne mettra pas fin à la guerre, car il s'agit d'une guerre civile. L'initiative Genève 2 proposée par Sergei Lavrov et John Kerry est tout à fait louable. La solution diplomatique au conflit syrien est préférable à l'intervention militaire. L'objectif doit être clair. Il s'agit de mettre en place un gouvernement de transition sur la base du consentement mutuel en vue d'établir un système politique qui réponde aux aspirations démocratiques du peuple syrien. Mes chers collègues, le temps passe. Ne calquons pas le rythme politique sur le rythme médiatique oscillant en permanence entre l'excès et l'indifférence. Maintenons, s'il vous plaît, une pression ferme et constante vis-à-vis -vis des autorités syriennes. Thank you very much, Mr. Demeli. As announced, uh, Madame Kedi Fry from Canada, and next one will be our colleague from Greece, Varamenos. Please, Kedi. President, and thank you for hosting uh, this fall uh, session, uh, and, to th and thank you again for ensuring that the discussion of Syria occurs now, because it's extremely timely. Um, I, I think that, as my colleague from Canada has already said, this is a failure of the international community. Syria represents an abject failure, not only because of the fact that so many people, seven million people, have been displaced, but the fact that we have failed to do anything about it in any way, shape, or form to deal with either the humanitarian crisis or the issue of a peaceful resolution to this conflict and political solutions that must come about. I would be remiss, Mr. President, if I didn't mention the fact that, in fact, women have been subject to a great deal of the humanitarian crisis here. And I wanted to apply our commitment that we made in Istanbul to look at the issue of empowering women under Resolution 1325 of the United Nations in peace, conflict, and post-conflict resolution. And we know that there is discussion now about a Geneva II that's going to be occurring in November. And I want to, us as a parliamentary assembly to ensure that women are there participating in this issue. Otherwise, we would have failed once again in dealing with Resolution 1325. But I just wanted to give you some statistical data about the violation of women's rights and human rights, both as displaced persons and by virtue of their gender. On September the 13th, we heard from the UNFPA that there are 68,000 pregnant women who are displaced. And in Syria, they have no access to health care whatsoever, and that they are blocked from going to hospital, and medical personnel are stopped from looking after them. We have seen and heard of the abduction of children and of women uh, as spoils of war and using them as a means to ensure that, that people confess. The threat of rape is also being used to ensure coercion to confess at detention centers and in prisons. We've heard from the Federation Internationale des Droits uh, de, de, de l'Homme that in fact there is increased domestic violence because of post-traumatic stress disorder by men within Syria and in the surrounding areas. And we have heard of forced marriage because young, young women now and young children are being forced into marriage so that they can be protected from rape and because if they are raped there is going to be honor killings imposed on many of them. Mr. Mr. President, I also want to say that we need to commit ourselves to doing something. What can we at the OSCEPA do? 
We talk a lot about the need just to give money. We talk about the need for aid. But have we been doing it? I think talk is cheap. We need to be able to start creating action. Canada has been helping with about $500 million to the countries that have taken in refugees. The burden of taking in refugees on countries like Turkey and on, on countries like Lebanon and Jordan is great. They cannot carry this out any further. So I think that we have to look at the issue of food security. We have to look at the issue of protecting women. We have to look at medical care. We have to look at lack of education. And we have to ensure that we step in now we cannot continue to talk about these issues. We have to act. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Eddie, for all, all your work okay. in this area, in these issues. And now we hear Mr. Varemenos and Mr. Rossi from Italy will be next one. Mr. Varemenos, please, the floor is yours. Dear colleagues, whatever has done the last few months proved that the only solution to the crisis in Syria is the political one. There is no other solution. If we want a radical solution and to avert the exploitation of war in the region, we have to agree that we need a way out of this current bloody situation, basic in a broader consensus between the powers which involved in any way to this conflict. If also we want to be honest, we must agree that the only reason that the war continues up to today is because the two fighting parts, and especially the opposition, wants to win negotiated advantages. This is the only reason for the, continue, for the continuing bloodbath. This must put an, op an end, not to mention that up to now, four million Syrian citizens have moved inside the country and two million outside in the neighboring countries. These countries in the south cannot endure a new wave of immigrants, especially in the middle of an economic crisis. This is a common Euro European problem. This is a common humanitarian problem. No one is so far, considering that he must don't care about this tragedy. All of us have the same responsibility. Otherwise, we continue to discuss in general and do nothing in concrete to tackle this humanitarian, huge humanitarian crisis. We have to share a problem which is common. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Rossi. And next one is Mr. Krupa from Poland. Please, Mr. Rossi. Grazie, Presidente. Cari colleghi, l'Italia ha condannato e condanna in termini assoluti l'uso di armi chimiche da qualsiasi parte siano intervenute e ritiene che il controllo e la distruzione degli arsenali delle armi chimiche sia un punto fondamentale per avviare un processo di pace che porti il popolo siriano a una vera democrazia. Concordiamo pertanto che non serva una soluzione di carattere militare ma che si deve tendere unicamente a una soluzione politica per porre fine alla crisi siriana. Una crisi che è già stata detta, ha causato circa 2 milioni di rifugiati, ma io aggiungo che di questi 2 milioni circa il 52% sono bambini e adolescenti, rendendo così il dramma umanitario ancora più grave. Ed è evidente che questo numero di rifugiati spinge sui paesi limitrofi e spinge sui paesi costieri e vediamo in questi giorni che i flussi dei migranti aumentano. Ritorno sul discorso di prima come il collega di Malta, sul discorso mattutino. Tutti quanti abbiamo mostrato una grande sensibilità verso il, eh, il problema dei migranti, ma io ritengo che sia anche il momento di portare in questa assemblea degli strumenti operativi. E allora propongo a tutti voi colleghi di prendere in esame il vero problema. Il problema è quello di evitare che questi, queste popolazioni debbano sottoporsi a un terribile viaggio via mare nelle mani di...
diritti umani solo per toccare il suolo europeo. E allora due proposte. La prima, quella di permettere l'avvio della richiesta di asilo e protezione internazionale sulla riva sud del Mediterraneo, nei principali paesi di transito, presso consolati e ambasciate dei paesi dell'OSCE. La seconda, quella di creare un ufficio europeo dell'immigrazione stabile in territorio nordafricano. A questo si aggiunge un altro problema, cioè quello del controllo effettivo fino a quando questi elementi non saranno attivi del controllo del traffico marittimo. E allora per controllare questo traffico, ma soprattutto per aumentare la capacità di salvataggio dei profughi, occorre rafforzare il pattugliamento mediterraneo Frontex ed Eurosur. E arrivo per ultimo per dare un certo senso più concreto della presenza e della sensibilità dell'Europa, la delegazione italiana è disponibile a portare avanti un discorso che sia volto alla creazione proprio nel nostro, nella nostra isola più gravata dal problema, cioè Lampedusa, alla creazione di un centro di prima accoglienza europeo in territorio italiano, così come potrebbe essere creato in tutti gli altri paesi europei che hanno lo stesso problema. Il Paese potrebbe farsi carico di una parte dei profughi, ma sicuramente la presenza dell'Europa nel centro potrebbe poi disporre affinché eventualmente quell'isola possa essere solo una via di transito per il ricongiungimento di quanti vogliono riunirsi a parenti già residenti in altri Paesi europei. È evidente, e noi lo sappiamo, che le regole che disciplinano la nostra Assemblea inibiscono la presentazione oggi di risoluzioni. Però è anche vero che noi vorremmo presenteremo questa risoluzione nella sessione annuale dell'Assemblea dell'OSCE e su quella risoluzione chiederemo la firma delle delegazioni e ci auguriamo di raccogliere. Chiudo, ma ci dobbiamo chiedere questa tragedia può aspettare i nostri ritmi? Può aspettare questi tempi e allora facciamo un accurato appello prima a tutte le delegazioni presenti affinché la situazione e questi punti possano essere posti sollecitamente all'attenzione dei parlamenti e dei rispettivi governi e infine un appello accurato lo facciamo a lei Presidente affinché un'assemblea come questa non si chiuda senza un gesto, una parola concreta che scuotano anche la nostra prassi ordinaria e i nostri regolamenti. Grazie. Yeah, we are now trying to prepare the communique. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rossi. We have six of our colleagues. First is, as I announce, our colleague Krupa, after them all, Karsted, Kovalev, Piccini, and Abdul Abdullah, like our guest on the end. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, talk very briefly about the problem uh, of foreign fighters' uh, presence in Syria. A lot of uh, the OSCE uh, citizens have decided to travel to Syria and uh, to fight for um, the rebel forces. However, the number of Europeans among all foreign fighters is not too high. We shall take under consideration their motives and their internal change as a consequence of this war. Uh, British journalist John uh, Cantley, uh, who was kidnapped uh, by European jihads in Syria, described his captors as disenchanted uh, and in, uh, in impressionable uh, young men from Britain, united under the extremist flag in Syria, uh, excited to see uh, genuine Western hostages which fulfilled their concept of that jihad uh, was about. Some of them will come back to their home countries being already influenced, uh, influenced uh, by extremist ideologies and following Al-Qaeda's ideologies at home. Uh, therefore, nowadays we shall focus uh, on the cooperate with the Muslim communicators uh, in our countries and support moderate teachers. The deeper integration of, uh, all, um, of all groups in our societies permit to limit the influence uh, of extremists. Uh, nevertheless, it is also essential for our governments to follow all cases of uh, the citizens' presence in the brutality uh, of the Syrian war. Thank you. Sorry, thank you very much, Mr. Krupa. Madame de Mol, please, the floor is yours, from Belgium. In 2014, that's next year, 
Belgium and many more countries around the globe will commemorate the start of the First World War. But it is in the city of Belgium, in Ypres and its surroundings, that chemical weapons were used for the first time in what we call modern history. We know of the horrors and hoped to never have to relive it. So we were pleased in September, we were relieved when the agreement was reached between the US, Russia and the Syrian regime to dismantle and destroy all chemical weapons present in, this, in Syria. It cer certainly is a step forward in the peace process, but it's also, is it also the end of the civil war? Some thousand people were killed in the chemical attacks, but some more than 100,000 were killed in a more conventional way. And even today, air raids are still going on in and around Damascus. At the start of the crisis in Syria, all the protesters wanted were socio-economic reforms. And we are far from that situation today. The regime in Syria turned against its own population. Minorities, whether religious or ethnic, are fleeing the country. All in all, one in four Syrians is displaced today. Yes, there is a humanitarian disaster, and Belgium is at least doing what it pledged to do. But let's not forget that the prolongation of atrocities was made possible by third, fourth, and even fifth parties. So I call upon them today, especially the ones present here, to finally take their responsibility and work towards peace, a peaceful and democratic solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madame de Mol. Kent, Kent Karsted for Sweden, please, Kent. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Um, sorry, I just. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I would like to draw the attention to um, the issue of burden sharing. Madame Heidi Fry was before speaking also in this matter. Uh, we have uh, heard many here speak very eloquently about the severity of the situation. Internally displaced uh, uh, people in uh, Syria, the, uh, the pressure on the neighboring countries. I have myself made four trips this year uh, to the area and visiting refugee camps and also visiting families who is, is hosting refugees. And the pressure is getting just higher and higher. If we do not help and support in a greater way, I think there is a risk of destabilizing the neighboring countries. That would lead to an even greater disaster in the region. We have heard by colleagues from Greece, from Italy and Malta and others about the pressure on the, the closest neighbor on the European side, how the refugees are coming and how the pressure are on their governments. Given that we already have financial pressure and, and, uh, and uh, other uh, issues stressing uh, this nation at the time, uh, it is very important that in uh, the OSCE area and on, in Europe that we have a burden sharing. I can uh, say that uh, my government, my country, is taking their part of the responsibility. We have, uh, through government decision, I think uh, decided to have the most generous uh, conditions for refugees in Europe by giving all uh, Syrian refugees permanent residency in our country. We understand that not every country have the same ability to, to have such uh, decisions, but we at least need to see that more countries take the responsibilities. We cannot just sit here and talk and talk about supporting and helping and not doing our homework. Today, Germany and Sweden together take two-thirds of all the refugees that comes to Europe. And if we look further, we can see that 10 countries in Europe is taking 90% of the refugees. 17 countries is almost taking none. And I'm not into finger pointing, I'm just showing the differences. Uh, and uh, excuse me, uh, dear neighbor Poland, but you have in your figures to Eurostat uh, registered 25 refugees from Syria. My country have taken so far this year and into next year 17,000. 
And of course, this is uh, just to show uh, the, uh, the difference from country to country. Also, when it comes to development aid, we need to help each other to help ourselves. Uh, because today also, uh, a few countries are taking uh, a huge part of, of uh, the contributions. UK, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, France, and a few other countries is paying the waste majority of all the funds that goes to the area. And we need, we cannot do it ourselves. We need to help each other. Uh, we are not trying to stand out in the class as being the best at all, but we, we understand that this issue will deteriorate if we don't help each other. Of course, the situation for the Syrian refugees have to be solved through the political uh, process that now is underway. And uh, we are very uh, happy to see that it's the p peaceful solution rather than military confrontation that now is, 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 um, is prevailing. Uh, we totally support the, the work of, 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 um, of the UN in this situation. And we uh, definitely would like to see that we help each other and give support also to the countries who are is, is receiving the, country, uh, the refugees first like Greece and, and Italy and the others. We need to help each other, otherwise this situation will definitely deteriorate. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kent. And now the head of the Russian delegation, uh, Mr. Kowale, please. Спасибо, господин председатель. Я хочу сказать огромные слова благодарности в адрес Черногории, организовавшей парламентскую ассамблею и проводящей ее на высочайшем уровне. Я хочу сказать добрые слова в адрес всей ассамблеи. Спасибо, коллеги. Мне кажется, что мы научились слышать друг друга, а самое главное – критически осмысливать то, что слышно от других членов парламентской ассамблеи. И результат не замедлил себя ждать. Ведь, по сути дела, мы сегодня говорим о том, что сотни тысяч жизней были спасены, в том числе, и благодаря усилиям парламентской ассамблеи Совета Европы. И мне кажется, что главное сейчас не потерять тот позитивный импульс, который нам удалось придать в развитии ситуации вокруг Сирии. В том числе, конечно же, путем единогласного принятия в Совете Безопасности ООН комплексной резолюции 21.18. Вы знаете, вот я слушал внимательнейшим образом, все мы слушали, российской делегации, особенно дискуссию. Конечно, много теплых слов было сказано. Еще больше теплых слов я услышал от коллег, которые, может быть, не решились впрямую сказать о том, что мы очень здорово в этом вопросе продвинулись. И я хочу подчеркнуть для всех что у нас появился редчайший шанс превратить урегулирование сирийского кризиса в вопрос, который нас не разъединяет, как было до этого, а всех нас объединяет. Для этого нужно, чтобы все начали работать на позитив. И, конечно, ни в коем случае нельзя, чтобы безответственные личности и, и, или экстремисты, связанные с Аль-Каидой, сорвали начавшийся процесс путем провокации. Мы удовлетворены тем, что в Дамаске на самом высоком уровне подтвердили готовность выполнять положение резолюции 2118 Совета Безопасности ООН и обязательства, вытекающие из присоединения Сирии к организации по запрещению химического оружия. Приветствуем, безусловно приветствуем, начавшееся практическое воплощение в жизнь шагов по уничтожению сирийского химического оружия. И подчеркиваем и отмечаем, что сирийцы конструктивно сотрудничают с международным сообществом по теме уничтожения химического оружия. Еще раз повторю, мы уверены, что так оно пойдет и дальше. И очень многое зависит от парламентариев. Необходимо, конечно, нам прежде всего добиться, от, добиться гарантий от вооруженной оппозиции, добиться гарантий по безопасности осуществления работ по верификации, перевозке и уничтожению химического оружия. 
к некоторым местам химвооружения, химоружия, надо будет добираться через зоны действия боевиков, через зоны, которые контролируют боевики. И здесь очень важно, чтобы была обеспечена безопасность тех людей, которые реально рискуют жизнью для того, чтобы достичь урегулирования сирийского кризиса. Думаем, что нам нужно посмотреть возможность общей позиции по этим террористам, в том числе отталкиваясь от оговоренной в Лос-Эрне идеи совместного антитеррористического фронта. Скажу также, что Россия оказывает помощь не только пострадавшему населению в самой Сирии, но и правительствам соседних Ливана и Иордании, столкнувшимся с большим наплывом беженцев. Я хочу поддержать позицию, которую высказал наш коллега господин Крупа из Польши, об ответственности государств за действия наемников в зоне боевых действий в Сирии. Это очень большая проблема, которую нам предстоит решать совместно. Исходим из того, что решение гуманитарных проблем сирийского населения напрямую зависит от прогресса в политико-дипломатическом урегулировании кризиса. И еще раз хочу сказать всем спасибо, потому что, на наш взгляд, произошло очень важное событие. Мы совместно приложили усилия к тому, чтобы с достоинством выйти из сложнейшей ситуации. Я думаю, мы об этом еще и поговорим. Спасибо. Thank you very much, Nikolai. We have last two speakers. Now I have to leave you because I have bilateral meetings, but uh, just to announce that standing committee will be at 3 p.m. and bus will start it to go together on the dinner half past seven. Because just on standing committee will be not all of us. See you soon and uh, Alan Neri will take over the chairmanship. Mr. Ficini, you are next one. Merci, Monsieur le Président, mes chers collègues. Je tiens tout d'abord à féliciter le président Krivo Kapic pour sa récente élection à la tête de l'Assemblée parlementaire de l'OSCE et à le remercier chaleureusement pour son exceptionnel accueil ici à Budva. La principauté de Monaco, malgré sa petite taille, contribue depuis très longtemps à la promotion et à la protection des droits de l'homme grâce aux multiples actions de son Altesse Sérénissime, le prince Albert II et de son gouvernement à travers notamment la coopération internationale monégasque. Concernant plus particulièrement la crise syrienne, notre souverain a tenu à dénoncer à la tribune des Nations Unies le 24 septembre dernier les conséquences humanitaires désastreuses que ce conflit a généré en termes notamment de personnes déplacées à l'intérieur des frontières et du nombre grandissant de réfugiés dans les pays limitrophes. La Jordanie, le Liban et la Turquie, parmi ces pays, pour ne citer que, sont devenus des terres d'accueil d'une grande partie des plus de 2 millions de Syriens réfugiés dans la région. Comme cela a été évoqué par le haut-commissaire aux réfugiés des Nations Unies, M. Antonio Guterres, lors de la 129e Assemblée de l'Union interparlementaire qui s'est tenue tout récemment à Genève, la Syrie a toujours de son temps été une terre généreuse pour l'accueil des réfugiés. Il faut aujourd'hui rendre cette générosité en soutenant les pays fragilisés par cet essor abondant de ressortissants syriens à la recherche d'une assistance humanitaire et vivant aujourd'hui dans des conditions plus que précaires. C'est une fierté pour mon pays de pouvoir dire que l'on fait partie de ces États qui contribuent à l'effort de la communauté internationale en soutenant notamment la mise en place d'un centre de santé par le PNUD à Xarta, au nord du Liban, qui permettra de prendre en charge près de 2000 réfugiés syriens. Le gouvernement princier finance de manière conséquente la Croix-Rouge internationale, collabore en partenariat avec le Haut-Commissaire aux réfugiés, ainsi qu'avec les ONG monégasques, pour dispenser une aide d'urgence aux populations réfugiées et déplacées syriennes. Je rappelle également que notre souverain a fermement soutenu l'adoption de la résolution 2118 du Conseil de sécurité sur le démantèlement et la destruction des armes chimiques en Syrie, 
qui sont une menace pour la, contre la paix et la sécurité internationale et leur emploi un crime contre l'humanité. Désigner, désigner ou stigmatiser des responsables est un exercice vain qui divise et qui ne fait qu'aggraver la situation actuelle. En ce sens, Monaco aspire et soutient une solution politique de la crise syrienne. C'est pourquoi on ne peut que se féliciter de l'adoption le 3 octobre dernier de la recommandation 2026 de l'Assemblée parlementaire du Conseil de l'Europe sur la situation en Syrie, mais aussi de la déclaration d'Istanbul, notamment dans sa résolution sur la crise humanitaire en Syrie. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci, M. Ficini, pour votre intervention. La parole est maintenant au dernier intervenant, M. Abdullah Abdullah, du Conseil national palestinien. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of the Palestinian delegation, I uh, thank the government, the parliament of Montenegro for the hospitality and the well-organized conference. As we are talking about Syria, I am very grateful, I recognize and do appreciate the sentiments the nice words about dealing with the derivatives of the conflict of Syria. But more needed is to deal with the root cause of this conflict. Therefore, we recognize the effort of uh, uh, the Russian president and the universally accepted proposal that this conflict has to end through political means and the preparation for the Geneva II conference is underway. Therefore, we have to support this political solution that brings about democracy to the country, that keeps the integrity, geographic, territorial integrity of the country, and preserve the human dignity. This is another proof that the Mediterranean is not a barrier that separates us. Mediterranean is a basin that unites us, that makes, makes the people of Europe and the people of the Mediterranean are interested in dealing, solving the problems that facing any party of them, because this cooperation will lead to more prosperity, more security, and more progress. We are Palestinians very sensitive to barriers. We have a wall that was built in the midst of our occupied territories, and this wall is separating student from its school, uh, farmer from his field, a uh, patient from his hospital, and that is, although the International Court of Justice on the 9th of July 2004, in its advisory opinion, suggested that this wall has to be dismantled because it is against the international law, it is against the right of a people to self-determination, and it's creating more hostility rather than making uh, progress. Mr. Chairman, at this time, we see negotiations have started, and thanks to the efforts of Mr. Uh, Kerry, who relentlessly traveled between uh, both parties in the region and led them to negotiations. I think this assembly is interested in uh, adding its support to these negotiations to achieve the goals of these negotiations. We don't want negotiations for the sake of negotiations but rather, as it's spelled out as a term of reference by Mr. Kerry himself, this negotiation has to lead to the ending the Israeli occupation and the establishment of the Palestinian state on the territories occupied in 1967. Therefore, an added support to this, to this effort from the OSCE and its uh, respected countries, members, will be a contribution to peacemaking. We need peace built between the Israelis and Palestinians so their future generation can live away from fear, away from hostility, away from animosity, and away from conflict. This will not only benefit Palestinians and Israelis, but it will benefit our region again once more and bring us closer to making this contribution. My final word, uh, we're grateful as Palestinians to the suggestion that this assembly uh, accepts the state of Palestine as a partner for co cooperation. Uh, we hope that this resolution will be passed as, as soon as possible, so we will be added to your assembly, trying to contribute as much as we can to peacemaking 
and bringing closer the peoples of the Mediterranean and Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Merci, Monsieur Abdullah Abdullah. Vous étiez le dernier intervenant. Nos travaux sont terminés pour la matinée. Je salue la qualité des intervenants et la richesse de leurs propos. Donc, cet après-midi est libre pour les délégations qui, je, je pense, ne manqueront pas de visiter Budva, magnifique Budva, et puis pour les membres du bureau, rendez-vous à 15h et rendez-vous tout le monde de 19h30 devant l'hôtel pour le départ des bus pour le dîner. Bonne soirée à tous.